welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having uh, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for a- anyone that who doesn't know you, Tim Inglehart is here with me, and uh, we're going to sit here and talk some shit, uh, drink some beers, have a good time. Sounds good. Nice to have you. Yeah, nice to have. Nice to be here. Nice to have you finally meet. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? We've chatted a lot online yeah. and yeah. Uh, through posts and, and everything. I thought it was great around Halloween. You, you were having those camp or those uh, fires that you were. Oh yeah, all summer long. You know, and, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was summer, it wasn't Halloween, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, just because I'm up late in the summer work. I did. Well, how'd those go? Did you get a lot of the creatives to come? No, no, because it's so those are always if I feel like it, I'm gonna do it, right? Yeah, and um, my wife's always, my wife was like, Well, maybe you should just plan something. Well, that's fine, but it's Pittsburgh, it's gonna rain, <laughs> yeah, you never know when it's gonna rain. <laughs> And like for me, it's just I'm I'm gonna unwind and relax, and I might plan something for one day, uh, three days out. Hey, this is what's happening. Come on over. And in my head, I have this ideal picture. Like I'm gonna grill. We'll have to sit around, yeah. talk all this yeah. and that. But then, but then what'll happen is the day will come, and I'll be like, I don't feel like that doing that anymore. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so it's sort of like it loses its its impulse kind of thing. And I'm like, well, I'm sitting out here. If anybody bored wants to swing by, this yeah. is where I'm at. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, we live, in, and I think, I think it's the culture of the city, we live in a place where it's hard to get anybody to go out and do anything, to gather, to do something, um, whether it be for a cookout, a campfire, a grill, just to come over and hang out or yeah. go to a show. And everybody's doing something. Yeah. And it's just so hard to get people to come to one thing when there's so much going on. Well, it doesn't help that like I'm sitting out there, you know, by a fire, a couple glasses in, and I'm like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, you're bored, yeah. you know, and it's like already eight thirty nine at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're already you well tanked. <laughs> but you know, like, uh, I think the best I planned it was like a day in advance, something like that. And uh, and Muldoon showed up, and um, Josh Snyder. Oh uh, yeah, two uh, two great guys. Yeah, in fact, I think he was hanging out with you before he had come home. Uh, uh, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah I stopped down and uh, pretty sure it's one of the times I had to go pick up some drinks off him. Yeah. Now, give me a little backstory on, on you on you and your art because you're a full time artist, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so jealous. Well, I'm not doing it alone. You know, I before this so. Like most artists I know, I've been doing it my whole life. You know, I grew up um, in a pretty, pretty creative house, um, music. Like my mom or my dad played piano, violin, love piano, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and my daughter's taking lessons now. Um, um, she hates it. Oh shit! You know yeah. you're doing it. And we had a big discussion last <laughs> night. So, so is it something that, that you're paying for lessons? Uh-huh. Now. Is it a contract on how many lessons or that? No, I've got a friend of mine. She and her husband are in a band, um, and uh, she she gives piano lessons. Um, works really well with us. I like her teaching style. It's not rigid, and it kind of reflects on Alyssa, the kind of learner she's going to be on mm-hmm. piano. And then you know, as my daughter gets better, she'll you know get, get a little more strict. With it. She, she just doesn't like it. She is 10, and 10 year olds don't like anything. And you ask them, what do you want to do? I don't know. I know I don't like that. I don't got a 10 year old yet. But and uh, um, every, every, every age is challenging. There, there's a sweet spot between like five and nine. Yeah. All right, right before they start getting to like, uh, you know, prepubescent mm-hmm. age. And I, I can't speak about what it's like. I, I, I'll tell you now, I got a son, he's yeah. two and a half. Well, that's a horrible age. Uh, it, well, two and three are, three is worse than two. Yeah, he, he's going through that stages yeah. right now, but uh, speaking, having a son, yeah. and also being a man, mm-hmm. growing up, obviously a boy, the penis is the most playable thing on him for him. Well, isn't it still? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, but he's like, 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 like he's fucking open about it. Yeah. I'm changing him. Oh, he's yeah. like, he's grabbing. I'm like, dude, man, that's normal. Yeah, I'm like, That's dude, absolutely just, normal. Just wait, yeah. just wait till you're older. Yeah. Like, 
Like, no, no, close no. Door? Actually, actually, like masturbation at two, three, four years old is absolutely normal. And but at that point, is it masturbation or is it's, it? Is it? It's, 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 it's masturbatory in nature. Yeah, it's, but it's more like, hey, this feels good. I kind of like what's happening down here. It still feels. I want to. Yeah, well, right. Yeah, that's what I mean. We never yeah. do stop anyway. Um, and yeah, so like. That's 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 normal. It can be it's kind of uncomfortable and weird, you know. Yeah. As a parent, well, and, and I don't have a, I don't have a son, but it, like there were times I babysat kids uh, and volunteered at um, my daughter's school when she was in uh, first, and second yeah. grade and stuff. And you, you know, I got to go in the boys' bathroom to keep them on task. And they, uh, it, there's there that is one that is just such a disgusting place to be is an elementary school boys' bathroom. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, well, 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 I, I think just in general, uh, uh, the male species is yeah. just a, a fucked up species in, 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 in a way that we're disgusting. I mean, we got something that hangs from us that we play with, you know? Yeah. And, like, I see with my son, and I love him. I love him. He's he's a dread man. Like, if you would have got to see him more, he's always just like, at this point, he's rubbing it. I caught him rubbing it on our, our oven door, and I'm like, oh, my God. So I had to literally stop what we're doing. Yeah. I was like, all right, new rule. We don't rub our rabbits on anything. Yeah. I was like, Joseph, put your penis away. Go. Right. Because like, it was bath time. So yeah. they like to run around naked. Okay. And yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. And then he was doing something with the sweeper. And my wife like had to tell him not to do that. Yeah. So I'm not, she comes and tells me, and I'm laughing. Because I'm like, well, he probably did it because it felt good. And he just put his penis on the extension of the we are oh my god. So okay, okay. <laughs> Off on this whole uh, this whole kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like the joy of uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. What, so what what got you like into art? Like, is there like a definitive moment that uh, you're like, I fucking love this? So <clears throat> so again, I was into art growing up, always drawing, painting, um, margins of all my papers, drawing art. Um, if I didn't like the class and didn't put much energy into it, I would doodle and draw and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, my mom went back to school when I was in elementary school. We were still living in Kentucky, which is where I'm from originally. And I'd go to class with her if she couldn't get a sitter. So I remember going into some of her, you know, like um, uh, studios and classes, and just they'd roll out a big piece of cutting paper for me to draw on. Like this one time, I, drew, I used to be really into Viking. Like nice. Viking ships. And yeah. Stuff. And I still love like nautical art and ships and you know old stuff. And uh, like I would just I was obsessed with drawing Viking ships and, and stuff like that. I just drew this huge ship and the class they hung it up there. You know, oh, so that, there. that was kind of like you your first show. Yeah, but I don't I don't remember it. My mom calls <laughs> me second hand. I remember playing with the clay and everything, but I was exposed to it. It was always around. Yeah, art was always around. My mom's books. And um, things like that, and then my dad's, a, you know, would, uh, he's a pastor, but he also is a musician. Um, and my grandfather was a conductor and uh, professor of music at several different colleges and universities. So, th so that was kind of the climate I grew up in. And, um, I continued, you know, obviously continued that. We moved around every couple of years, so art became kind of my outlet, you know, and kind of the way that I connected. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, it either it either like it, it either um, connected me or it ostracized me, you know, because high school is clicks. It's all broke up, uh, you, know, I, you know. And when you move into a new place, and I moved a lot, you know, and, and, and you couldn't even get into a click. You know, you'd move there, and, and um, this is probably where I just learned to become really good at being isolated and by myself and okay with. See, I love at this point in my life. I love being by myself. Uh, it, I go to movies by myself. Oh, it's, I, I love I, I love going to movies by myself. I, I but I hate going to the movies. Uh, see, the I, the best thing about going to the movies for me, I love movie theater popcorn. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I fucking love it. Like I, I put a little extra butter on it. Yeah. I get a tall coke, and I go sit down. And I watch the movie. Yeah. And I, I think I appreciate it. Popcorn now, excuse me, because my son can't eat popcorn. Okay. Yeah, it, for some reason, it, it gets all these red blotches over. Oh, really? Yeah, it's weird. Like, but he can eat corn. Okay. 
Okay. So it's probably some of the processes yeah, and, yeah. and, and all yeah. the fake ingredients that they put in there and all the bullshit. Right. So now, like, I just took my daughter to go see the new Star Wars. Her, her and I are getting it. And the lady, she, I was like, what the hell? She's like, I want candy. I was like, well, I'm getting popcorn. <laughs> She's like, I don't want any. I was like, I didn't say it. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to share with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? I, the lady's like, what size popcorn do you want? I was like, give me the big one. Right. And so I got this big fucking thing of popcorn. And I'm just loving it. I'm just like, like I'm eating it like, like a fiend. Just, they just got it fixed. I'm just like just throwing popcorn in my face. And then I feel this little hand. Just, I was like, I, I was like, I, <laughs> you knew like, it was going to happen. I, I knew that was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, I'm the same with Reese's Pieces. I don't like, I don't like, uh, I don't like popcorn. But I love Reese's Pieces. So I go to the movies and I'm just like, and then by the end of the movie, I got to shit myself. Like, yeah. I've been eating all this candy yeah. and peanut butter. I'm like, oh, that was bad. Well, <laughs> see, see my, my, my go-to, like, if I'm getting chocolate or something, uh, is uh, snow caps. I love those little snow caps. I love oh, yeah. dark chocolate. Okay. And, and I wish they didn't put the white things on them because they go everywhere. It's like yeah. sand. Yeah. It's like sand. Three days later, I'm going to my pockets. I'm like, what the fuck? I got, I got, that, I got those white things in me. I'm like, yeah. fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's like glitter. It never goes away. Yeah, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it's, it's like... The snow caps is the is the same thing, I guess, for glitter is like the strip club. It's the candy strip club yeah, yeah, glitter. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. That's, that's how. It is. Yeah. My wife. My wife. I don't think she coined it. I bet I'm positive she did. But she she calls glitter the uh, it's the herpes of the craft of the uh, craft world. Oh, it is. You can't get rid of it. It's everywhere. And and like we have we have a moratorium on, on glitter in our house. There was an incident uh, last in 2018. It's the glitter incident in 2018. <laughs> it's the glitter incident. And there were little girls with glue and paint on them and glitter everywhere. Oh. And it was a nightmare. And at that point, it was like, there's just no more glitter. Yeah. Ever. Oh, oh ever. I, and, I, yeah. I hate glitter. I, I, I really do. <laughs> like, if there's a, like, something that they saw in the paper or, or, or someone said something home from school, and yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, why would you use glitter? Like keep out of your fucking house. Yeah, like I, I, I hate it. That's what you. That's what you get to parent to, to kids whose parents you don't like. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I, that, that's a good idea. And, uh, it, unfortunately, I like I or not unfortunately, but I, I haven't met many of the parents where my kids go to school because okay. I work all the time. Okay. So my wife takes them, and then my okay. mom picks them up, and my wife picks them up from school. Yeah. yeah, I'm the I'm the primary parent on all fronts, so it's balancing that. You know, because my wife, when I say partnership. Like I don't do this by myself is because my wife's I got my wife's support. Mm -hmm. She has a good job, and it has our you know we have our health insurance. It's not good enough that she can carry all the bills and pay for everything herself. I have to bring in money. Well, I, I mean, I, and, I think that's like I think in this day and age, it's it, it, marriage is a partnership. Yeah, it's a it's an understanding of sharing uh, yeah. responsibilities. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and absolutely, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I, I, I think uh, responsibilities are. Amazing, but they're hard. I think marriage is like amazing, but it's hard. It's, oh, yeah. a, it's a give and take, a compromise between both. And it's uh, I'm somebody who takes my vows very serious. Mm -hmm. and, uh, with everything that I've been through, I can tell you, my wife, my wife loves me uncontrollably because one, I'm horrible with a label. I am. <laughs> I, I I know I'm a fucking asshole. I'm, yeah. I mean. It, I'm an asshole in ways where, and I don't try to do it. Like, if there's some almond milk left, like this much, I'm not drinking it. I put it back in the fridge. I'm like, that's all. I, like, that's all I wanted. Yeah. And then, like, I will sip out of the container. I'm clean. We're all family. Yeah. And then it's like, I will get dressed. In, I will get undressed in the living room. Go in our bedroom, get dressed, and I will leave the clothes on the floor. Sometimes, like. And I don't do that. To just, I'm just like, you know what? I'm watching TV. I don't want to miss this part of the movie or something. Right. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just getting undressed. I'll take care of it later. Then I forget. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think my wife is the same, especially when I was taking Ambien. Oh, my God. That does some crazy. Oh. Did you ever, like, just wake up? and you're, Like, I've heard some stories oh, about what? what people do on so Ambien. I got, I, got, um, I got a couple of Ambien stories. I mean, I, I, we, 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 I'll make them quick. So one, I had a job where I was always working nights. And I couldn't sleep because I was going through nights and days, nights and days. Like it, it was always fluctuating. 
schedule. So my boss at that time was taking me in the end, right? I I was like, hey man, can I try one of those? Because I can't sleep. He was like, yeah. It, he took one. I didn't know. You take it, you go right to bed. Mm -hmm. My understanding of taking it was take it, stay up for a little while, have a couple glasses of red wine, go to bed. <laughs> now, th this is back when I lived at home. Okay. okay. And and it's just my mom, right? Yeah. It's her and I at the house. I don't know if I woke up or if I was already awake, but at like 2.30, 3 in the morning, I kicked her fucking door in, her bedroom door. I was like, Poof! just kicked it in, not violently. I just kicked it in like Rambo. And I did, she's like, what, what's going on? Like, this is what she's telling me. And I just leaned in, was like, I want some fucking white pizza. And I shut the door. Now, I don't talk to my mom like that. Yeah. Next day, I don't remember anything. She goes to work. I wake up. I do my thing all day long. She comes home. This is my off day. She comes home with a white pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this is. I was like, thank you for the white pizza. Yeah. I was like, uh, what's that about? She goes, kicked my door in last night. Told me he wanted some fucking white pizza. And my, my mom doesn't curse. I, I mean, she, she is a saint. And uh, I was like, I don't remember any of that. She's like, what are you talking about? So I explained to her, I'm like, yeah, I kind of illegally took a drug, you know. So then I got it prescribed to me. I went to someone's doctor. And then a couple years later, I was on it for a while. I wake up in the, in the middle of the night. My wife's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? She's like, what? <laughs> like, like, I'm, I'm not paraphrasing. Like, this is what she's, she told me. Yeah. Fucking blue balls are outside. So my wife, who's a saint, plays along. Uh -huh. She's like, why are they outside? <laughs> I was like, they're here to steal my knowledge. I was like, Ian said they're here to steal my knowledge. So I start crawling around the, the, um, the house. Yeah. Army style. Like, standing up. Its walls, like looking back, trying try, try to see the monsters, the, the fucking robots. And we're in our back bed. And, and I'm just like looking out the window and I go, she goes, come sit down. So I'm sitting down with her and she's like, just calm down. Calm down. I want to get the monsters away. And I looked at her with the most dead, like serious look and I was just like, no, we're not. Oh my God. Yeah. And then after that, we went to bed. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> The, the last story I have is, is I used to take it, drink a bunch of wine, totally wrong. I don't recommend that to anyone, unless you want to have a, a good time and you can be sure you're not going to do anything stupid, like dry. Right. So I have a couple glasses of wine, I take it, I'm in where I used to paint, and I'm just fucking having, having a great time, painting and doing all kinds of shit. So I go to our sink that's downstairs it's one of those big it's a pittsburgh sink for the mm -hmm. most part you know it's like the big plastic thing tops yeah. around or, or whatever yeah slop sink yeah. Yeah, yeah i had to pee so i'm peeing and i thought it was a great idea to take a video <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the, there, there's no cock shot in it or anything okay. but like there's like just 14 seconds of just good streams of piss just coming out i filmed it and i texted them he didn't find it humorous as I did. <laughs> no, so like, like I mean, Ambien is a is a is a fucked up thing. Yeah. But like, I, I did feel like it, I was kind of, I, I would be more different in my art. Now, I, um, let's spin it back on to you. Now, I, I, I don't want to say to ramble about me. I mean, no, I'm just stupid. Yeah, now, fun, good story. It, uh, <laughs> uh, it was a great time. I, but I, I will take Ambien again just because yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Plus. Now something goes wrong with the kids. I, I can't be driving around in circles yeah. in my driveway, right? Trying to get to the hospital. You know, yeah. I, I don't want that. Right. Um. Are you showing a lot? I, I mean, because like I, I don't. I've known you for your art, mm -hmm. like uh, probably through Facebook or, or Instagram, coming across like Pittsburgh artists or something. Yeah, yeah. And and just like falling in love with your art. Like, yeah. Uh, I, I like your style. It seems like you have a bunch of different styles, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which is the, the one that is more like, I guess, contemporary abstract, where 
it, it, abstract but, expression. Yeah, yeah. Like I love those. And then you did one. I guess they're like redwood trees, or, or, or they're the white trees with the, I don't know what they're called. Oh, aspens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it has the green background and the and the white trees on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, aspens. yeah I, I think those are beautiful, and I think those are oils too, right? Uh, mixed media. Okay. Oh, well, some of them are oils, some of them mixed media. Um, and uh, this, I've got I've got several that I've done. Uh, but yeah, I, I. So I have I have an interest in kind of a lot of different styles of art, a lot of different artists and genres. Um, and it, when I first started doing this, I wanted to get, I wanted to kind of try as many styles as I could. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to paint muraling. Like my muraling is really, that's my job. Yeah. Well, that one you're working on looks like, a, um, something that dumps melted steel. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Out in, uh, yeah, yeah. That is sick. Thank you. That yeah. is sick. And that, I mean, that. That was kind of a that kind of a culmination. Like when I got to that, when I got that job, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So the wall was already mural. It's out in Corey Office. But the mural is aged, it's dated, paint's peeling, they had had some water damage and where I painted used to be a, like a bay door and it was sealed up. And so I came in and, and um, I just took it straight from a black and white photograph of and and I just showed it to him. I thought, this is what I'm going to do. But I'm just going to use blue and orange. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, it, it's disgustingly and, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It, I, did, I did almost that entire thing with rollers. And, and yeah, because I, I remember I, I we were commenting back and forth. Yeah. And, and yeah. I thought you used spray paint. A little bit. Not very much. No. I almost saw it with rollers. Like, yeah. it, that, that's been, like, that's my biggest thing. Learn how to use a roller because you will save so much time. That's it. Money yeah. too. I mean, I had money, and also like recognize. I did that with 14, 15 by fifteen foot mural. Did that in two days. That's awesome. Yeah, and, it, it, and, and it all rolled. I mean, also having a good plan, knowing exactly what you're going to do. Yeah, and I I find that I run into a problem with something like that at times because I'm not very, I'm not a good planner. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I sketch a lot, and when I go to paint my sketch. Sometimes I don't even do my sketch. I'm like, fuck it, I'm doing this. Yeah. And it, I, I just think that's how I am. I mean, uh, structure is good for me, but uh, and planning is, is always good. The only time I plan something out is either a commission or a show. And, and when I'm doing it for a show, I, I, I have a theme for it. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I'm horrible, man. I'm fucking good. Yeah, <laughs> uh, when... Uh, like if I'm doing a mural, and, it's, and, it's, and I've only done a few murals here and there, um, I kind of just go with what they want, and then I kind of just add my twist to it at that moment. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm just going to do this, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Uh, but it's amazing that you can actually plan something out, because my mind, uh, I'm too scatterbrained. Well, I, <clears throat> and that's come from like trial and error. Uh, the murals where I kind of have an idea, and I just go into it with like a, a loose design. Um, take forever to do. Where I'm sort of like, well, what do I do next? And you're trying to figure it out on the fly. And A, that's, that lowers my, that's not cost effective. So like, I like to average a certain amount per hour. You know, I charge by the square foot. And like, well, I want to be able to average this per hour. So the best way to do that is to have a good plan. Go in and, you know, plan your work and work your plan. And, yeah, well, and, and just I know exactly when I'm working I'm like all right this is exactly what I'm going to do next this is what I'm going to do next after that it's not like well maybe I should put something right there I already know what's going to be yeah because I've, I've I've you know done the like the foundation no you brought up like you want to make so much an hour of pricing and stuff do you have it do you ever have a hard time feeling like you don't know how to price something or if it's going to be the right price or Pricing for me is always difficult because yeah. I, I, I hate when somebody, and I, you know what, I did it when I was a, a kid, like looking at, like, say, a Picasso or a Warhol or whatever. It's like, oh my God, it, that took like five minutes to do, if that. It's like, well, you're not really paying for five minutes, you're paying for what, 
what they did to be able to do that for you. Right, right. Um, now, for me, price is just difficult because it's like I, I like to make my stuff affordable, but I would love to one day get into that fine art community where if America would happen, my stuff, a painting like this would sell for thirty thousand dollars. Oh sure. I, I, I mean, I mean, but I, at this point, I I can only name probably two artists off the top of my head that paint like paintings in their cell for thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Like I remember seeing uh, a print of the one artist that, that I was following. Not on Instagram anymore. I think it was an eight by ten print, or no, or sixteen by twenty print. Ten thousand dollars yeah. for the print, and he sold an hour. Sure. And like, I'm not trying to come across at, at all jealous, but I'm like, how did you get that point? Yeah. And it, but, but his style was very unique, and and, and uh, I, I I I love seeing his Instagram and, and seeing it, but it was like. Dollars and, and his paintings go for up to the hundreds of thousands. Sure, yeah, like yeah. A, like for him to do a mural, a minimum of two hundred fifty thousand. Right, and that's awesome. I, I like I, I I encourage everybody to be able to to try to get that. Yeah, uh, but, it, but at one point he wasn't selling that. No, you know, you know they, it's, it, he started out at one point. Um, for the first couple of years I was doing this, pricing was I was desperate for money. Right, needed to pay bills. Um, I didn't have a name. Nobody knew who I was. Or, um, I didn't have a, a style. I didn't have. I didn't have a market, um, and I didn't have a plan. Um, I just. I quit my job, <clears throat> miserable at it for ten years. Just didn't, well, not miserable at the job. I was really good at it. I just hated it. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> and I just thought, you know, I, I just I want to be an artist. So I went into it without a plan, without a one year plan, five year plan, nothing. It's just like, oh, I'm just going to paint pictures and people are going to buy them. That's going to be how the world works, right? <laughs> Which it was that point in Right, yeah, yeah. I, and, well, and it was a, I woke up to that one pretty hard. And um, so for the first four years, probably, um, I would try to cater to whoever I could to sell it. No, so you were at your job for 10 years. Oh, I was done on like after the first year, but you know I couldn't find work. You know, it was too, you know the, the economy wasn't great. Well, sorry, no, no uh, worries. And uh, yes. um, um, I'll join you. Yeah, please do. But uh, I'll let you go first. Uh, oh, it's uh, here a we go. Yeah, it's okay. a lightsaber. <laughs> oh, that's Wait, awesome. We're Star Wars house, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Star Wars. My family is not, but that's okay. I'm not a fanatic or anything, but I do like it. So, um, so yeah, so I, I started doing some research and reading and, and started figuring out, you know, I need to have, who do I want to sell to? Who do I want my market to be? And so once I figured that out, then I started to um, work towards marketing my work in that direction. But that was By 10 the, years ago. No. T oh, I'm not talking about 10 oh, years okay, ago. Okay. I'm talking, Sorry, about, I was I'm say, talking about just a couple of years ago. Uh, how did you market it 10 years yeah. ago where Facebook was still... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, but right now, it's like, it, right now is the best time in history to be an artist. There's it, never been a better time in history it, to be an artist than right now. I agree, but I disagree. And I'll tell you why. I'm not trying to interrupt you. Uh, no, go ahead. But, oh, first, cheers. Yeah, absolutely. We live in a time where there's so much talent. Yeah, there's so much talent. But we also live in a time where everybody's an artist. Everybody. And then what bothers me is not not bothers me, it frustrates me, I should say. Well, it's not a bother, it's a frustration. But you have a woman, a girl that is obviously painting something beautiful. But yet when she takes her picture, posts it on online, she's wearing something very provocative in a bathing suit or in a bra or 
or something that's like, don't use your body to sell your art. Use your art to sell your art. Like that, but to me, I'm like, maybe because I don't have an amazing body. <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe you should give it a shot. You know, yeah, like, you know what? It, it is. <laughs> yeah. Buy this painting. Right. You know, right. Just, just, just fucking like. Well, I, I will say to that is, is that any different a marketing tool it, than I, something else? It is a marketing tool, and but, the whole and and art never art rarely sells itself. We like to think it does, but art never sells itself. The artist sells it. The, the, the artist, the sells dealer it. sells it. The the interior designer sells it. The gallery sells it. And but the the art itself, you know, I mean, people will buy an art painting that they like, right? They, it, it's objective, so they're going to go, "Well, I really like." And I'm going to buy that. But most of those paintings that people are buying at that level are 200, 250 and below. Yeah. Right? They're, it's, it's not to knock it because I was there, but it's almost like hobby art to me. I, I, I think everyone, for the most part, is a, a hobby artist. And, and I'll, I'll say, well, <coughs> and my okay. reason being, yeah. and, I, and I, I don't mean it derogatory or negative. Um, I think a hobbyist, it, I consider myself definitely a hobbyist artist. Okay. Because I'm doing something I love. Well, it, it's not work. It, right. It, when, when, when that, I can, that can still be, I mean, just because you're doing it and you love it doesn't make it a hobby. If you're doing it and you love it and you're trying to make a living at it, then that's no longer a hobby. And okay. when you file taxes, it will show that that's no longer a hobby. If you have a okay. job and you're like, well, I like to paint in my spare time, and now and again I sell some paintings, you know, and it's fun, and you know, it's it's a good outlet for me, and I enjoy doing it. But it's not my job; it's just something I do on the side. So I guess for me, I I, I see your point of view because you are a full time artist. Um, and for me, I guess I would be more of a hobbyist, I guess, because I do have. Uh, when I lost my job mm -hmm. a few years ago, uh, before we were talking about that, I was actually selling a lot at that time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I was trying to think, should I try and do this full time? Mm -hmm. Or go get a job? Yeah. So, but, but I'll say even, even in your case, all right, like even if you're doing it and it's perceived as a hobby, right? You have a full time job. Most artists I know have a full time job. Oh yeah, it's it's insane. You know, because you got to pay bills. Oh so, yeah. You know, and 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 um, and I'm that's why I'm always quick to say like, no, 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 like I yeah, I'm a full time artist and I'm making it. But let me tell you my story, okay? Uh, 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 <laughs> and I'm not doing this by myself. Like, first of all, we live below our means. Right? We live, you know, my my mortgage with taxes and everything. Is a lot less than most people's rent, you know. So I mean, we we are in for it. We only have one car, you know, and we keep things as simple as we can. But I, I think that's good for the for this day and age, though. Yeah. I mean, because everything costs money. Yeah. And, but you're also teaching your daughter like something with that too, like. like well, I like to think so. Um, you probably but she's spoiled. We spoil her. What kid is it? Right? Yeah. I, I mean, I know. I, I mean, uh, honestly, if, if people are able to, they, they spoil their kids. Yeah. And even when they're not able to, they yeah. spoil their kids. Right. Uh, my kids are absolutely spoiled. And uh, to me, I don't care about money. Yeah, I want to make it. Yeah. But it doesn't mean shit to me. Yeah. I just uh, want to pay my bill. Really, what I want to do is pay off all the debts that we have. I, you know, I think that, that's like my whole goal this these next two years is I want to the car off, which will probably happen. I want to pay off my finish paying off my school loan, which and that's it. It's Absolutely. brutal, you know. Right. It's, that's it, it, like, and it, yeah, it's brutal. I, I'm paying on a school that doesn't even exist anymore, and I think that's that ITT. Okay, I went I, to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, so that's no like, longer there. Like, yeah, so like, why should like they already got their money? Yeah, yeah. Like, and they filed bankruptcy, so they settled out of court for a lump sum. Why should we continue to pocket? Like, in, in, I, I understand you used it, but right now, if someone looks at it, like it's not a 
incredible school. It's because right. it's out of business. Yeah. Like, can you go get parts for a Daywood or a Daywood, <laughs> whatever it was? No, you no. can't. It's not. It's not even a vehicle anymore. Yeah. And, yeah. and to find parts for it, it's like, who the fuck has it? No. Right. So you got to yeah. go online and look for that for that special niche of a car yeah. dealer uh, or body shop that has it. Yeah. But I, I, I just think this day and age being an artist, like you know, just going back to that, is amazing. Uh, I, th- I think we have technology to use in our advantage, but we're also competing with other people. Yeah, well, of course. Um, and you know, you look if you look back at let's say impressionist and post impressionist period, uh, late eighteen hundreds, mid late eighteen hundreds in, in France, right? These masters, the Degas and Monet, and you know, the, the, the names go on and on. They had people selling art for them, right? They weren't selling their own art. They had people who were trying to sell for them, or, or and they, they weren't, and, and they weren't even doing it success, successfully because they were breaking the mold. Yeah, you know. So it, it's all the way, like even in, really all the way up until the internet and social media, artists have been either busking to sell or working with galleries. So that's been the old shoe, the old model, right? Working oh, with, and and that those were your ways, your ways to do it. Now social media comes along, and everybody with a paintbrush can say, "Hey, look, this is what I did," and, and I think that's amazing. It's fantastic, and and it's also, um, it's also extremely courageous in a lot of ways because there are a lot of artists that are scared to show their work, but they'll oh, post something on there. Oh man! And it's... you put yourself out there to be exposed and possibly criticized. Oh, criticism, like. I love criticism. I love it, but I but criticism. You, you, you know what I mean? Okay. Don't don't just comment. This sucks. This is ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or what the fuck are you doing? No, like that's not a critique. No, it's no. not. And I actually got into an argument, and I was talking to uh, Lagoon about this, or no, no Cam about this. Um, the guy actually commented on my post. Was like, man, you call this art, or this is an art, or something? I'm like. Who the fuck are you? So I like went back and I looked at his stuff. He's doing nothing but like team sports and a couple like fishing things where it says fish here and stuff. And I'm like, dude, you call that art? Yeah. Where in actuality it, it is art. Yeah. I mean, if you're creating something, it's art in some yeah. ways. But it's like, don't come at me criticizing me. Yeah. Well, I think those or, kind of critiques, those kind of critiques are all about the the, the person issuing that building themselves up, trying to feel good. It's like calling someone a name. Right, it's 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 juvenile, it's childish, it's it's disrespectful, unprofessional, and really, it's all about that person being so insecure they want to feel better about themselves, so they're going to knock someone else down. Yeah, and and it's like I will never comment or criticize someone else's work. I mean, one, they're doing something. I mean, are are there some artists that I particularly don't like their work? Yeah, it's not my style. I don't like it. Sure, but I'm not going to sit there and always be like, oh, that sucks. Sucks, you know. I might say that person sucks because I don't like the person. A lot of artists are assholes. Oh, I, I mean, I, I mean, it's like I, I'm, and I'm okay being a dick. I'm fine with it well, at this point in my life. Like I, I, I'd rather be honest with people. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> but being honest, is but, not but, being but that, a dick. no, it's, no, no, it, no. But it can be perceived as being a dick because people, well, you know. Well, like, oh, well, we also live in a time now. Uh, as great as the internet is, we also live in a time where we have to water down and put on kids' gloves mm-hmm. to be honest on yeah. this. And I'm not saying like when I say kids' gloves and stuff, like No, you, no, I get it. Like, yeah. 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 It's like if I don't want to do something or or if it's not a job for me or if I don't want to sell it for that price and I say, you know what, I don't want to do it. This isn't gonna work out. Best of luck to you. I'm a dick. Because I'm not giving the answer that somebody wants. Right, right. And and I'm not saying it in the way that they want. I don't try to be disrespectful. I don't I don't try to be like to hurt someone's feelings. But I'm gonna be I'm, I'm a real straightforward person and a lot of times that gets me in trouble because I'm coming across as yeah. abrasive, very arrogant, and it's like, no, I'm not time for bullshit. My answer is no or my this is my answer. Right. Like if you don't like it, whatever. It's fine. Well, and the advantage with living honestly 
and being honest with people and being confrontational with people, but not not in a manner that's going to degrade them or, or disrespect them, but just being like, look, you know, I'm going to talk this, this, or that. And if it's a serious issue, taking it off public, yeah, you know, is that when you also, on the other hand, apply praise, I know it's real. Yeah, I know it's genuine because this is the type of person who's going to be honest and tell me exactly what they're thinking um, and do it respectfully. Yeah, it, and if I don't like it or it's hard for me to hear, you know, that's my problem. And that's what it comes down to. It's like, I'm not going to absorb anybody else's anger or frustration. I'm going to tell you what's up. And if you don't like it and you got a problem with it, that's fine. I'm really great at disassociating myself. See, I used to have a problem. And what I call it a problem is negativity didn't bother me for all that much because I didn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, I say all my rejection letters. Or a screenshot of someone saying something bad to one day be able to go back there and say, yeah. if, if that day ever comes, be like, oh, you I made it, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. You know, like, I eat those words. But now it's like, I got rid of all that because it's like, if that happens, I want to be humble. Right. I want to be, I want to, it's like having a beer. Act like you did it. You know? So uh, to me, I was like, I have to get rid of it. And now with how everything. I'm trying to minimize all negativity in my life mm-hmm. to zero. I mean, yeah, there's bad moments and stuff, but like everything on social feeds to just the news and everything. I hate negativity. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we live in a negative world where it's hard to get away. And I would, I would like to think that myself and all the artists are trying to change that mm-hmm. by putting what our vision out there. Uh, and, and I think somewhat of an experience or a pass on the artist's mind. You, you know what I mean? Like like putting it out there in hopes that it's perceived as good. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, uh, that's that's my thought. I'm also half <laughs> stupid. Uh, I, we're drinking, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've shown a lot. I don't believe I've shown the key one. Uh, anyway, I, I don't show very much. I, 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 I've noticed that. Like, um, is there a reason why? Because you obviously are doing this full time. You're yeah. very, you're successful. Yeah. You're very successful. Well, that's that's so. Every year I sit down a, a number of benchmarks I want to accomplish. And this year I want to get it. This this year I want to have at least you know I want to at least um, have two two shows lined up by the end of the year. But I'm also selective of where I want to do shows. I'm not going to do shows in bars. I'm not going to do shows in coffee shops. I'm not going to do, you know, um, because that's not where I'm going to meet the market that I'm presenting to. Now, do you want to do shows in Pittsburgh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's some there's some great venues that I um, that I'm looking to, to make contact with this year, that, and I go and check these shows out and the venues. Um, and part of it is like not knowing how, and I'm learning how by reaching uh, out to the artists that are like, all right, so how do you reach out to an owner? What's what's the appropriate Manner and yeah, that's that. hard. I've, I've um, always and I, cause I want to be as professional as possible, you know. Yeah, but like, what way is the most professional way without? And, and I'm saying this because I'm in that category too. Yeah. Uh, so don't take one thing I don't say. No, but, but how, what is the best way to come across as look at me, look at me, you know? It's letter like, of introduction. Well, well, yeah, th- there's yeah. that, but then it's like. You want to give yourself a little paragraph that is at least thirty seconds long yeah. to describe you, and it's hard to put, pick out those those words that that are key hitters. Yeah, and stuff like that. Like, I, uh, luckily, I have found a gallery where I work very well with the with the owners. Is that the Ketchup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ketchup City. Uh, uh, Christian and Nancy are amazing. I, I highly suggest them. And the okay. reason I say that is they are for the artists. They are for the community. Uh, Sharp. There's a lot happening in Sharpsburg yeah. right now. Oh, it's great. I didn't realize that. I, I mean, I, I had heard about it. And then I went down to, I was telling you earlier, to um, Zinka's gallery down there. It, it, his, his artists are phenomenal yeah. artists. And the show that's there right now just blew my mind. I, 
went down earlier in the week before the show to see it. You know, you go to see art at a show, it's hard. Because there are crowds of people in the oh, yeah. work, you know. So I wanted to, and I, I was just like blown away. Um, and, uh, um, but I was just like, I'm driving through Sharpsburg trying to park this spot. Like, holy crap. That's, there, like, there's a lot of lights on in the windows in this town right now. And nowhere to park. And nowhere to park. <laughs> and, you know, it's got, what, three breweries now? Or two. It's got Dancing Gnome and Hitchhiker. And yeah, I Gnome want to say there's one more, but I'm not there, positive. There's a um, Christian who's opening up a, okay. uh, a distillery. It's going to be a whiskey. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, but now now it's getting art gallery. You know, and, and it's got Ketchup City and, and Wazinka moving down there. I mean, that, that, brings, that brings the next level up. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it's going to bring yeah. And then the people that are going to that gallery is going to see the Ketchup City, right? And, and see the artists in there. Um, like I, I personally love their gallery. Okay. Uh, not just because I'm friends with them now. Mm -hmm. um, they know how to treat people. Yeah. They know how to respect the art. Um, the, the the walls are beautiful. I I had my uh, the first show I had there was um, Wake Walk Sleeping, and see my art displayed the way it was mm -hmm. it was amazing like wow. I, I saw and, and, and I, I always say this about myself I see I saw all my shitty work yeah hanging on these bright white walls yeah and it was beautiful yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like so if you get a chance hit them up yeah I, I, I will I would check them out first you know like that's another thing I think is important like you like I want to I visit places first of all I get a feel for like how's my would my art look be well represented lighting good you know all yeah. these different things and then talk to artists who have shown there and find out their experiences with the, the owners you know um, and, and do you know I, I do a fair share of, of homework and I do that because early on like I'd hang my art wherever yeah see I was doing that for a while too. and and I realized after a couple of like coffee shops that like people don't come to coffee shops to buy art and the people who do buy art they're just you're gonna nickel and dime paintings the way, and I well, and that's I, I had to figure out what kind of artist do I want to be, who who do I want to be as an artist, and I went out to Vegas a couple of years ago to do a mural. This is really kind of a pivotal moment, and I went to a Martin Lawrence gallery there, and I'm looking at the art in the gallery, and it's phenomenal artists, and I'm like, I want my work here, and if I want my work here, I need to be aiming. I need to be hitting those benchmarks that will get me to a point where I can be seen in a gallery like this. And that's and, hard. And that's it, hard. it's extremely hard. And I might fail at it. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, but you're going to fail at it. I'm yeah. going to fail at it. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because art's very subjective. Mm -hmm. Some of the best artists have been turned down by numerous galleries. Yeah. Some, but and and that's it's galleries are in the business of selling. So if you're, you might be a phenomenal artist, but it might not be what the market wants right now. Yeah, see, I've found so they might be reluctant. A lot of galleries are, so they have their, um, they have their, you know, abstract artists, and then they have their, you know, super realism artists and their pop artists. You know, they have their artists that meet these genres. Yeah. You know, and they're not going to take you. Yeah, I, I've tried to get into a few galleries here. Uh, the, the one that closed actually told me they really love my work. We're not taking any new artists. We'd love to show you, but we're not taking new artists. I'm like, how can you say we'd love to show you, yeah. but you're not taking more artists? And I understand that. Like, you, know, you don't want to be oversaturated or, or, right. or, or overwhelmed with too many artists that if you have design. And that's cool. I think I, I found a, a guy in England that, or in London, that has asked me to be a part of their, their, their community and their show my stuff on site, like on their website. Uh, right now, but I think that can land into something that is very showing out there mm -hmm. eventually. You know, like, like I could eventually do that, but it, it's I, I think it's hard in this city. I, I, I really do. I've said that uh, we come from a blue collar city. Um, you and I aren't necessarily paying Pittsburgh to be to work. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I've ever done a Pittsburgh. To be honest, uh, and and it's not because I don't love the city. Yeah. It's because 
my the way I started was definitely my, my love for hip hop musicians. I was doing Bama. I was doing that, then I got into pop because that's got Bama, you know. Yeah. Dr. Seuss, Mickey Mouse, Pete, I mean, that's all fucking fan shit. Yeah, it is. And then I, but I put my twist on it. But then it's like now I'm starting to do my original one more. And uh, I was talking to a dear friend of mine, and uh, where he, his wife hit me up with was actually with this band. Uh, I'm just coming up with some bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he was a great dog. Um, but she was like, can I get that? So I got her a friend. And then he called me. And, and, and they live out in Cincinnati. He's like, dude, I'm looking at this. He goes, I'm not trying to be rude, but fuck, dude. It looks like a kid could do it. And he starts telling me about this, right? He goes, I have a friend that did this kind of like. He's like, I'm telling him that, man, a fucking kid can do this. And I, I can do that in two minutes. And he was like, cool. Do it. So he couldn't do it. And then he was like, dude, your art, he goes, you have evolved into what is an outside artist. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not I'm not a trained artist. I'm not I don't have schooling really. So I, I looked it up and I'm like, holy shit. He goes, how he goes, did that just evolve or is that something I said? It's just me just fucking painting me. Like, like I wanted to draw a dog in a fucked up way with a wing and something. I was like, is that just how it happened? I was like, yeah, I understand it's a bosky eye-ish in a way. Um, you know, I'm not copying on him or anything, but it's very individual. So, so is Warhol, so is Rothko, so is Dali, like, so is David Cho, Jerry Fish. Like, I have a lot of artists that inspire me. Um, so he was explaining that to me. He's like, I fucking love it. So, like, it, it's, it's, it's weird how, you know, how did I get on this rant? I don't know. Uh, like, what is <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck? You should have just told me to shut up. Now nah, you're on a roll. Like, yeah, yeah, but that's the, that's like the best time to tell me to shut up because now I don't even know where we're, we're talking about. Oh, about uh, city art. Like, yeah. it, it's people like people like people like art for where they live. Mm. You know, and and um, and I get that, uh, and I, I try to use that. So you know, I have a body of work, and I still work on some that that's geared. Or places I've been out west, because ultimately that's where I want to live. I don't like. I'm not a huge fan of Vancouver. I've been here for 20 years, and I'm, I'm tired of them. Right oh, now. it's a rough city. And and it, it's it's just I grew up moving every two to four years, right? Um, we're not going to go anywhere for a while, not until my daughter's in middle school. And we may never, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the, the we may never be able to afford to. Um, but I a lot I have a body of work that I, I'm working on that's you know the Aspens for instance that's influenced by my backpack and trips out yeah. lives. Was it those those uh, those twelve by twelve paintings that you were doing? I think yeah, the mountain peaks. Yeah, yeah. Were, were, were those done with uh, um, a um, a palette knife? Yeah. Well, I only use palette knives. I don't use brushes. Get the fuck out! Yeah. I, no, no, no. I I'll use brushes with acrylic paint. Okay. Okay. So all your oil, but all my, but I hardly ever use acrylic paint. I rarely use. So, so you use mainly oil paint, almost exclusively. Man, I see. Yeah. I love oil paint. I yeah. love it. I'm horrible at it, and, yeah. and it's because I don't know the mechanics. I don't know the chemistry. I don't know the the combinations, the the right amounts of stuff. Yeah. I just pour and I stir. I yeah. pour, stir. Like I don't like. Is it wrong? Yeah, it's probably wrong, but the way I do it, there, there's it's, no, it's right for me. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say anything. I don't like right and wrong with art. Now, there, it there, exist. there, there is a more, you know, when it comes to techniques and styles, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. But when you're talking about creating, people find their own, find their own way. Um, I don't use brushes because I hate cleaner. Oh, my and, God. And also, uh, so my wife has asthma and my students in the house, I don't like having chemicals exposed. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and but the, 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 the oil chemicals, the paint thinner, and the, the, the linseed oil. And, I don't and use some any of that. I just use, I straight from the tube and palette knife, and I just, I work it on there. And because I work with such thick textures, I do a lot of my mixing of paints right on the canvas. And so, yeah, and it's just like, what's going to happen when I so, do it? So you don't mix any linseed oil or anything in your work? Rarely. 
too early. Sometimes I will, but how well does it take out your paint? Well, it depends on the paint. So, you know, like a paint's gray uh, because the uh, oil to pigment is much higher. It takes a lot longer to dry when I use that. Same with like a Zillion Crimson. Yeah. But then there are other colors that, that dry pretty quick. And it, and it, it also matters. Like, so my paintings are for various levels. I mean, some of them are scraped down to the canvas in areas, and other areas they're standing, you know, an eighth of an inch off the canvas. So, like, they're ready to go. Like, I can I can sell them, depending, you know, within a couple months. You know. Okay, so so they but they wait for the dry time uh, to touch, dry yeah. to touch. Yeah, yeah because if they, now, they, but, it, it, but like a thicker painting will take. Two years before it's yeah, yeah. I, I when, when I was doing uh, research because I wanted to get a oil painting because I I love the being a classical painting. You know, I oil. What's great about oils is the colors. Oh, the colors. The, the and, and when you put it down, that's what you're going to get. You know, you paint with acrylics, are going to dark. Paint with watercolors, you're going to like. Yeah. Paint with oils, you're going to get this. Yeah. yeah it, I, I, but I love that. Yeah. But then, like when I'm when I'm looking online, yeah, they're like. Take up to two years for an oil painting to dry to cure. To cure. Yeah, that's the touch. But I, I have, I, it will take. I've done paintings that are pretty thick, and they're ready. I, I'll sell them uh, within like six months, and I, you know, I'll let them know, like, look, this is dry to the touch, but those thicker areas don't, you know, and people aren't going to have to poke them. Yeah, some, some people, some, some, some people, people, some people do, but. You know, for the most part, with an oil painting, I think there's also this sense of because it's oil, the that it's more fragile. And you know, well, it's an oil painting. It's that. Well, to, to me, I always think oil paintings to be more expensive because a tube of oil paint can cost two hundred dollars. Yeah, well, I'm not. You know, I'm getting much you trapped in it. Like, like I don't get studio art, studio paints anymore um, with oils because. Take forever to dry because they're just so damn forgiving. But I, I, I was using this uh, this stuff uh, and I practiced on just a fun piece I had. It was a uh, liquid that really helped my paintings dry. Just okay. mix it in with it, right? Uh, like, it, like uh, yeah. There's a lot of different. I mean, there's a medium for all kinds. You know, uh, to to achieve almost whatever you want with oil. This, this right here is actually oil paint. Okay. And, 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 Touch it, yeah. Uh, like, oh yeah, it's still tacky. Yeah, yeah. And, and I did that's like, I think that was like four months ago. Or I don't know. I work I enamels into them too sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, uh, I never thought about it, and I was talking to uh, Josh Hogan. Okay. He and his wife Nicole own uh, Box Art Gallery. Yeah, yeah. Right. So Josh is arts phenomenal. Like I, I really like, and I. I you know, I'll check. I'll, I'll try. I try to hit a couple of their shows a year, but uh, his studio is up on the third floor. And um, you know, I was talking to him, and he was just mentioning, you know, he said, "Yeah, so I use enamels." And so, so does the enamels help it dry, or does it make it hard? No, um, it just blends nicely, and it just gives it a night a different texture. Uh, and I don't use it a lot, but you know, I'll work yeah, it. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Because <laughs> like, I, I want to try it. I just I'm, use one shot. Okay. I, yeah. Because like um, I wanted to get into wheat pacing and stuff like that, so I, I hit up Jeremy Raymer, okay. uh, and I was uh, talking to him, and he was telling me how to do it. Like, there's so many recipes online. Okay. You never know which one to trust, and he told me a good one to get. Yeah. And that's uh, it's just uh, it, uh, I'll have to show you. I, I it's like wallpaper stuff. Yeah. And then some. Uh, like uh, I, I have two two things in there. I don't want to show you, but it's like mix it in a little bit of water and put it in there, and uh, then it's a seed and everything like that. So it works out well. Oh, yeah, okay. like, that's what that's why. Like I ask artists questions all the time. Yeah, yeah. I think mean, most of us are, are are willing to share and talk. But then again, there's some artists that aren't. It's yeah. like, why would you want to share? Like that, that's why I say we're all competing. Yeah. In some way. Yeah. Um, what are your goals for this year? Uh, so, my goals this year, like I said earlier, are to, to have two, at least two shows scheduled. And I don't anticipate getting one this year, usually, you know. 
usually they're booked out for at least a year or something from what I understand. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll try to do the contact. Um, so that's one of my goals. Um, those, I guess those are probably two of the biggest benchmarks that I'm looking to be at. I'm looking to land one more big mural job. Um, and muraling is, for me, that's my job. I don't love it. I don't See, hate I, it. Lo I love painting outside every time. Oh, I, I, do, I, I do love painting outside, but as far as muraling goes, it's, it's all right, you know, that, that's what I do. What I do in my studio is who I am. So my I, abstract art, that's who I am. That, that's the honest stuff. The muraling, that's. That's often comes from my illustration background and my love of different illustrative styles. Yes. See, and, and anytime I've done a mural, I've always gotten people that want me to not have got money for this. They want me to do something. Oh, excuse me, take me a burp. But, um, they want me to do something that I've done or a similar style to something that I've done. Uh, it, it, it's because of my style. Yeah. Uh, I have a hard. I'm at a point now. I have a hard time painting what people want. And it unless I have hard. A, it, it it can, it's hard as fuck. Well. Yeah, it can be hard. This this past year, these past couple months, um, I've lucked out with that where I have been I have enough body of work yearly that shows my how far I can stretch. Yeah. Right? I can do, you know, abstract murals, I can do realism like a kahuna, right? The the water drop. Oh my God! Well, where's that place that you went to, Kentucky, or or where was it? Reno, um, Nevada. Is that that one that has like the the, the serpent? Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or is that was that a serpent? Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's Reno. that was very oh, Japanese, yeah. man. Yeah. Like like, and that was like that's the way I took it. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't intended that. Um, so like I did muddy waters and I designed that mural and. Um, and they were very clear on what they wanted. You know, they wanted this. They wanted it to look like they had torn the wall down and discovered this map. So I researched like all these old nautical maps, 15th, 16th century. So a lot of like on that mural, like the style of the ships that are painted on there are taken directly from those maps. Yeah. The sea monsters directly from that map, except for the the serpent itself. Like I. I I used the serpent imagery, but kind of did my own head. Oh, with yeah, it. yeah, yeah. You know, I, I did my own thing, and then I did the mapping and all of that. That led to um, the uh, Flowing Tide Pub out in Nevada discovering it through a Google search uh, for a new restaurant they were opening in Vegas. And they flew me out to paint. They basically just wanted the same thing out there. And so, one thing I like to do with my clients is I like to I get to know them. Yeah. And that's one of my you know, that's sometimes the most fun part is getting to hang out and get to know. Them. Oh yeah, I mean, because it's it's like you're gonna be working for someone. Yeah, yeah. For, uh, but but I also want to be able to put part of them into the room. Mm -hmm. So I make the mural person. You know, like uh, uh, the guy who was managing the one in Vegas, uh, named Hunter. Uh, great, guy. we became like really close friends really quick. Um, and uh, you know, so I included some things. That Stories that he told me map areas of the world he knows the map, um, and then same restaurant group like now to Reno, and the two partners that own the whole group between the two of them have six kids, and so I named each of the ships one of their kids. Oh, names. that's cool. That's you know, great. little things, little things like that. You know, I yeah. make you know I make the uh, area around the one in Reno. It's Lake Tahoe, the southern part of the northern part, and. There's a legend out there, uh, uh, Tahoe Tessie, you know. So, yeah. so you know, I want to I want to include part of part of that in there. But the the style of that dragon just evolved, and ultimately it just came down from uh, the way fins might have been drawn on sea monsters back then. And I just used that, and with a couple, you know, and I only used three colors on that whole mirror. It, it was what blue. I used blue. I used a uh, raw. Well, I'm not counting white and black. Uh, raw sienna, which is one of my favorite colors, and then uh, a raw umber. It's, I'll tell you now. I, I was I love seeing those pictures. Like I nice. thought that I thought they were fucking dope because yeah. like it actually made me think of a book you would open, like say like from Moby Dick, like, right. from, from that time, and you're yeah. just like 
Well, that's what I want to create. I want to create a story. I want you to walk in and so like when you walk into the place, and it's great being on site while construction is going on. So I'm having conversations with the construction workers like, all right, this is how this is going to be framed out. And we're going back and forth. And I said, well, this is what I think is going to look great. You know, where are you going to start this trim? We'll bring it out to here. Maybe we make this jagged. So it becomes a partnership with me and the contractors on site. So they're they're sitting there working, they're doing their thing, and I'm doing mine. You know, and yeah. And so like I, I'm excited to see pictures of the final product because it's not done yet. If the mural's done, but it's never done until it's framed. Yeah. Right? Until it's like in its proper environment with the TVs hung, with the paneling all jagged and everything around did it. Did you um did you have to clear code it or anything? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Because it's, um, it's a bar, you know, and so you know you get alcohol on it. It's acrylic paint. It's gonna run. It's gonna run, you know. And someone splashes something like that. Yeah. You know, so, there's a fist fight, man. Yeah, you yeah. Want to get on it. And, yeah. yeah you so want to that and on. so I want them. Yeah. So absolutely, absolutely. Clear guys. So, uh, without even thinking, him, just answer this question. Yeah. Who's your favorite artist? <laughs> oh man, come on, come on. Uh, dude, I'm not good with favorites. Um, Jesus. Francois Fresnier. Don't know who it is. I want to look him up. Google. His work is phenomenal. It's, I, I love it. Uh, I first saw his work at uh, um, Martin Lawrence Gallery out in Vegas. Uh, follow him on Instagram. Doesn't have a huge following, um, but his work is phenomenal. It's always great. When artists that you look up to also respond to you and like right on your work, yeah. right? Um, going back, uh, Edward Hopper, uh, I love his work. Maybe my favorite American artist behind Wyatt. Um, and what I love about his work is that everything feels almost hauntingly empty. Yeah. And there's just like this vacancy within each painting, and that my work doesn't resemble it, but it's in know it's like this like, even though he'll paint a house it's just stark it's just his house and railroad track in front of it but it's the way he uses light and this emptiness and it feels void or yeah. something but yet at the same time there's something more going on you know there's an honesty about it and I often use him as a reference too when, when we talk about successful artists and he sold his first painting which actually which hangs in the Carnegie Museum here in Pittsburgh it was 10 years before he sold another yeah, and he's considered maybe one of the best American artists of the 20th century. You know, so I mean, it puts things in perspective. And it also puts things, it also, I mean, imagine what these artists would be like if they had the technology and the access oh my God. to clients that we have now. Yeah, could, like, you know? Like, could you be a Magic Warhol, Boss yeah. God, Salvador Dali, like uh, Picasso? And I know I'm saying a lot of household right. names, but. But those guys, those guys also benefited from the fact that they were changing art at a time that was ready for change. Well, it needed change. It, it, not only did it need change, but the art reflected that need. Uh, it, it, to me, it's a very during that that whole punk scene. Yeah. Like, like you had a lot of a lot of stuff going on at that time, sure. and you had a lot of people that had a lot to say. There was a lot of emotions, a lot of things. Like like I said, like a lot of things going on during that time. Mm -hmm. People didn't know how to process it. Yeah. I Maybe I mean, I mean in, um, in different ways. In different but, ways. I think I think we're always trying. Things are always changing. We're always trying to process it, and, and there's always factions who are always trying to fight the change because change is scary. So, I, I, as a person, I hate change. I I, 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 mean, I love like I I relish it, um, and only because we don't grow if there's not change. We don't grow yeah. if there's not discomfort, and I don't you know, I don't like discomfort. But discomfort's I mean, a sign of change. Eh, to me, discomfort would be like a finger in the ass. You know, like something that, <laughs> something Is that, that really discomfort, though? Well, it depends, <laughs> it depends on the finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. Or it depends on the ass. Right. right? It depends on which end you're looking at, you know. So, um, uh, let's, uh, let's tell everybody where to see you. Uh, uh, Instagram at Engelhart Designs and Facebook. Uh, I've got a website, a little behind on it, but it's uh, engelhartdesigns.net. And um, right now, that's about it. I've got some work to visit Pittsburgh for a little while longer, and hopefully later on this year, I'll have a show. Awesome.
awesome. So um, everyone, please go check him out. He's a gentleman. He's a scholar. He's an amazing artist. <laughs> uh, he enjoys some beer. Uh, go, go look at him. Go follow him. Buy his work. Support a living artist. Hey, thanks, Bob. Thanks, man. Yeah.